being able to outthink your enemy is absolutely critical. Having state-of-the-art kits and equipment, which allows you to keep the enemy on the back foot, be able to conduct that find more dynamically, more quickly than the enemy are able to find you, is always essential. Just confirm you see that you just... We were really fortunate to be selected by the army to carry out a sort of a, a program over three years of experimentation, okay. which has really tried to bring light forces forward in terms of its innovation, its lethality. A series of new kit and equipment for our soldiers to, to use, but not just use in how we already do business, but change our structures, change our tactics, uh, and really try and advance how the infantry is going to operate going into, into the future. We've had great opportunities to sort of test and trial that in the, in the rugged terrain out here in Cyprus. To be the commanding officer and, and seeing troops literally being the first ones to get their hands on some of this kit and equipment and it's not just a single piece it's it's multiple pieces and it's that power of combination of how we can use these different pieces is really special we recognize the privilege but also if you like the responsibility and it's the battalion's responsibility to be the architects of how the army is going to fight and win in the future sites that are able to outrange the enemy, unmanned aerial systems that can identify them uh, or pre-ID pre them, enable us to target them ahead of time are absolutely vital. As the intelligence officer, my job is to understand the threats that we might face. It means that we can adapt our tactics, training, etc. to fit that threat. We've had a real mix of equipment, so we've had everything from new communication systems and situational awareness devices which allow our sort of command and control to sort of move at a much quicker pace. We've also had robotic patrol vehicles uh, which is lightening the load for our soldiers and allowing us to look at sort of sustainment and dispersable in, in, a, in a really different way. We've had new flying systems, uh, new sites, new weapons, so it's, it's a real combination and, and the, the base aim is to make our soldiers, our companies, our battalion more lean. It's quite a, a unique opportunity to try and bring different kits together and try and incorporate them into, into the light role. It's quite a challenge, however, it's one that we've been looking forward to. We've been given the aerial site, we're looking at using the new night vision site as well um, and try to incorporate how they're linking with the DSA and giving us an all round better situational awareness, especially for myself being a platoon sergeant, looking at where everyone is on the battlefield. They look forward to taking on the knowledge and trying to pass it on. They look forward to having that one upon other individuals, other platoons. Look, we've got this kit, I know about it, you don't, I'm going to teach you about it. It's quite a good position to be in. I'm the drone operator within the platoon, so uh, I deliver training to the, to the private so that they can function the kit properly. And then obviously I try and use it in a tactical sense and try and inform my platoon commander how to use it. We'll take the new kit, such as uh, the dismounted systems and the UAVs, and we'll use them in like a combat effect. But we'll also test in the kit to send back feedback to the civilians who have created it. Well, the drone, to be honest with you, it can, it can go to quite a distance. I mean, I can send it 2K away and then bring it back with all the footage recorded and then, then extract it. You probably use it in a more of a reconnaissance way, try and look down the battlefield so that we can get some in-depth positions if needed. I'm not trying to take away the basic skills and drills of uh, trying to rely on it. Obviously still sending out patrols to check the areas that the drone's found. The drone's just there to assist. The DSA stands for Dismounted Situational Awareness. A little phone on your chest connected to the radio. It allows you to look at the different positions of the people currently the DSA on sort of like a satellite map. It shows you where they are, gives you a lot more knowledge of what's going on in the field. If you're in reserve and you're just checking it just to see what's going on, whether the rest of the sections are attacking or if they're retreating or if you've got people coming back to you. It's good to rely on it, but also you've got to think back to basics. If it broke or the batteries died, then obviously you've still got the knowledge as an infantry soldier to put them into play if it goes down. I've only been in seven months, so it's quite a big jump up testing this new kit. The future of the army, it's all very advanced, it's good to get your hands on it. An RPV essentially is a unmanned vehicle you use on a controller like you would do an Xbox control pad. You just put kit there, a normal infantry soldier would usually carry different support equipment and you would just drive it about either by the control pad or you would put a route and then off you go. It more or less relieves the infantry soldiers to be able to do more missions and tasks that it wouldn't necessarily be able to do and you can essentially do a task without being fatigued as much as what you would be carrying it.
can carry about 400 to 500 kg. It's fully electric. A few hours to charge it and off you go. So Cyprus is quite arduous terrain. Even for the regular infantry soldiers, it's quite challenging. And it has proven to be quite effective on this terrain. We have done gazi vacuum with it. Resupplies to uh, sections under contact. Mission Master you can go 30 kilometers an hour, which is fairly fast for an unmanned vehicle. I think you really cement the, those findings and you really validate that when you take it on operations. That's what we'll take forward when we go back to the UK. And, and of course, we were privileged enough to sort of do that on Operation Pitting last year and no doubt do that again on, on operations going forward. Coming over to Cyprus with my first posting straight from training, uh, it's been a big, a big jump in uh, obviously moving away from home and stuff. But obviously you can't really complain with the weather being out here, and you get some downtime to enjoy it in like local villages and cities, and you can really enjoy it out here. This is the second time I've been here. A great change moving out to Cyprus. You've got the, the luxury of the weather. Training area is fantastic. Uh, the ground for, for this role that we've, we've, we've taken on it is perfect for us. Just as a private soldier, look, joining the army, getting away from, from, from home, you can't really ask for a better posting than Cyprus. With Covid now lifting and restrictions, they're enjoying the, the island of being away more and more. But home for me is Bradford, um, the capital of Yorkshire. Look, we're very proud Yorkshiremen. Uh, we love getting back home, however, we also love Cyprus.